I really doubt the U.S. will make any sacrifices for the sake of the world environment. As the official U.S. youth delegate, Michael Dorsey sees himself as an advocate for change within the system. He has been booked at the Sheraton, where the president will be staying. However, unlike U.S. government delegates, he will have to pay for his own room. They say, well, we have the, you know, the, the support of NGO community, and we have the support of all these environmentalists, and they're on our delegation, but wait a minute, we're certainly not paying for them. As this is developing, having the huddle is going to become more key because once we get here, we're going to be pulled off in more directions. We may not see each other until we decide to huddle again. Right. The three of us, myself, uh, Diane and, and Don Edwards, uh, the three African-American delegates to the U.S. delegation, were all given that appointment after uh, the incidents in Los Angeles uh, surrounding the Rodney King affair. So uh, we put one and one together, we certainly get two. Put on that noise. We want to tell you that for many, many years you've been destroying the forest. And we're going to tell you that we're not going to let you finish cutting all of our forests. At Rio Central, Michael, Don, and Diana accept a list of grievances from the Kayapu Indians of the Amazon. The U.S. government delegates claim they're too busy to meet with the tribal group. The one thing that I'm going to do is I, I talked to Yolanda uh, about running an ad, or not an ad really, I, I guess, not, not an ad, it's not an ad, no advertising, but, but putting it in Michael's ad. agenda includes coordinating with other youth delegates to the summit. Of the world's several thousand representatives, only a dozen are under the age of 30. With the nuts and Although the youth delegates get to question a number of the world's leaders and policymakers, they get few answers that satisfy them. Are there any kind of notions that you're thinking through currently and uh, the British government is thinking through to expanding the role of NGOs in the official process? Uh, uh, it's not just for governments to implement. Governments will sign, but it will require business, industry, commerce, consumers to implement that. Now, we haven't worked out the details of how that will be done. The most unfortunate and depressing thing on the delegation that we get is the kind of the attitude. Uh, it's a very stern attitude. People are very serious. Uh, I don't know, kind of a cold shoulder, if you will. The, the real serious advisors to the delegation come from corporations. You know, they, they come from big business and they come from industry. And, and this is not only true of the advisors to the U.S. delegation, but it's true of the unsaid process. Dave Brower begins his days at the small apartment lent him by a Brazilian citrus and rubber grower interested in organic farming. I'm ready. Okay, Jimmy, see you at the speech. Okay. <laughs> Today, Dave will give a speech on environmental restoration before meeting with a group of high school exchange students from California and Rio. In my lifetime, the Earth has used four times and used up four times as many resources as in all previous history. And although when you talk about growth and begin to criticize it, a lot of people my age turn off their hearing aids, we've got to look at it because we cannot conceivably continue to grow, to count on economic growth and development as a solution to the world's problems. What has happened in economics is that the people who are advising our government, other governments around the world, all have this common fault. They leave out of their calculations two of the most important factors of all. What does their idea, what does their scheme, their project, what does it cost the earth? What does it cost the future? Juliet drops in on Dave's speech for a needed break. Things are not going well for her. My luggage and my bags are, are locked in the room next door to me. So I'm here, but I missed the meeting I was supposed to go to, and I'm not having a lot of success setting up my dance meeting, so... Um, I'm frustrated. I'm hot, and I had to bribe somebody to get in the gate. Over lunch, Jerry Brown discusses Dave's idea for an international green cross. Well, we need to have some specifics. And you call it, a, what's wrong with calling it a global conservation corps? A global... There are all kinds of good names, and everybody's using a different name. So I'm, I don't object to that, so I like to get the job done. See, Dave believes the work of environmental restoration will be the main task of the next generation. The Great Valley of California, when I was born, had 6,000 miles of salmon streams in it. Now we're down to just about 200, and our farmers don't want us to let enough cool water down at the right time so that the endangered salmon can have water to be endangered in. 
I like to put it another way. I'm trying to get somebody to come up with a television commercial to show at the time of the Super Bowl where you have a split screen. And one screen, you've got a football field, and then you fill it with forest. That amounts to about an acre. And the other side of the screen, you have Joe Montana throwing a long pass to Rice. And before that pass halfway gets there, the forest disappears. That's the rate at which we're destroying forests around the world. I saw a sign that they hung up on the stand, and it said that the government of the United States does not represent the people of the United States. Do you believe in that? We've had polls, polls all over the place. The polls say that something like 65 or 70 percent of the people of the United States would give up environmental, uh, for the environment, to say that they'd give up jobs. That's a hard one to do. And growth. But that hasn't reflected itself in the administration at all. We're tired. We're hot. We don't like our government. We're tired. We're hot. As the summit enters its second week, environmentalists, frustrated with the Bush administration's positions on climate, biodiversity, forestry, and financial aid, take their protests to the street and, on at least one occasion, to the beaches of Rio. Dave, can you talk to the pastor? He's going to walk from right here. This is David Brower from the Earth Island Institute. David was at the, Earth, the Stockholm meeting in 72. He's here again in 92. And he's got a few words to tell us. My favorite comment is that we should watch the Soviets very carefully. And if they can make democracy work, we should try it. And if anybody's laughing, I'm sorry that it's funny. That evening, Dave visits the Greenpeace ship Rainbow Warrior for a private meeting with the Dalai Lama of Tibet. Privacy being a relative term when there are 9,000 reporters around. Peace is not only need by need, need for human being, but planet also is in need peace. So the next October, the co uh, the, the construction will restart. By the second week of the summit, Juliet has begun making contact with the people she's been looking for. She talks strategy with a Japanese group fighting to save the Nagara, the last free-flowing river in Japan, and with Matthew Konkum, a Cree Indian leader from Canada, fighting the James Bay hydroelectric project. What does the international pressure do exactly? Quebec and in Canada, they're open to criticism because they, they, they like to criticize other countries for their de how they're dealing with the environment and how they deal with human rights. So uh, that forces them to look at what they're doing in their own backyards. So far I've been able to meet up with Vijay Pranjbai, who's fighting the Namada River Dam in India, people who are fighting the Nagara River Dam in Japan, people from Argentina fighting the Yasudeta Dam. Hopefully by Thursday, when we pull the symposium together, we'll find five or six other people. And we're hoping to have as many people representing um, areas actually affected by dams as we can get. Juliet returns to the World Bank booth with Canadian author Pat Adams to find demonstrators have altered the sign. This is the, the World Bank booth? Yeah. Is the People's Bank or the World Bank? Is this the People's the Bank, Bank or the... Bank. It, it's the World Bank. Yeah. Where did the People's Bank sign come from? Well, why why did you say that? It's a, a kind of joke that some put it in somebody's oh. ear. But it was... You know, I heard before heard the fact.